Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Anna, and today we've been doing all the books I have not read from my bookshelf. Let's get going. So I've counted them, I have put 24 unread books, it's actually not too bad. So I'm really surprised. I have one book that's out, well, I'm actually currently reading, but still, I'm still going to include that in the list. Also, I did got this idea from a page in a chapter. I will leave a link down below so you guys can check it out. Also, don't come at me for my thumbnail. I have 24 books and I can't hold them. They were so heavy, so don't come at me off my thumbnail. <laughs> Let's get going. So my first book is Hollow Smoke by H.M. Long. Uh, I actually don't know what this is about, but this is about like a battle between the gods of the old world and the new Hesse realizes that it is far more on the line than securing a life beyond her own death. Bigger, older powers slumber beneath the surface of her world and they are about to wake up. So, again, I really want to read this someday, so yeah, I'm hoping I will read it someday. My next book is Pandora by Susan Stokes Chapman so, and this is from London 1799, Dora Black, an aspiring jewelry artist, lives with her odious uncle atop her late parents' once famed shop of antiquities. After mysterious Greek vase is delivered, her uncle begins to act suspiciously, keeping the vase locked in the store's basement away from prying eyes, including daughters. Intrigued by her uncle's speculative behavior, Dora turns to young, ambitious antiquity scholar Edwin Lawrence, who eagerly angers to help. Edwin believes the ancient vase is the key that will unlock his academic future. Dora sees it as a chance to establish her own name. So, it sounds really cool, but it's not Greek mythology inspired, but it does have, like it's not a retail is what I'm trying to say, but it does have Greek mythology in it, so I'm excited. I've been talking about this book since forever and I still have not read it, and that is The Mimic Game by Cynthia Murphy. We have six friends, what is it? It's basically a group of strangers who met on this, like, Reddit-inspired website, and then basically they want to play the Mimic Game. But the rules of the minute game, you have to start at midnight. There should be 22 knocks on the dot of midnight. And then the midnight man's supposed to appear. So, yeah. you have to, And you have to finish the game all the way through until 3.33 a.m. So, you cannot cheat. You cannot turn on the lights. You have to finish all the way through. So, I'm, I still want to read this book. So, I actually want to play the game myself. It is an actual game. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. And probably, I'm finally hoping I'll read it for a book away, maybe, so that's exciting. I really want to get this book because it's, I believe the sequel already came out. That is Seven, Le Seven Faithless Saints by M.K. Lobb. In the city of Albazia states, and the displays rule with terrifying and just power, playing favorites with the unfamous struggle to survive. After her father's murder at the hands of the Brazilian military, Rosanna Lactosa is willing, is willing to do whatever it takes to dismantle the corpse system, tapping into her powers as a display of patience, joining the rebellion and facing the boy who broke her heart. Well, that sucks. My next book is the sequel to a song like Silver Flame Like Night, I believe, and that is Dark Star Burning Ash Falls White by Emily Rangel. The demon gods have risen. Sky's end has fallen to the colonizer and land and Zen have chosen sides, but they will not fight together. Though Lan inherited the power of the silver dragon, she understands the path that she must take. She believes the demon gods to be the cause of war, conflict, and turmoil. Once, she knows that if the Lashians manage to bind one of the legendary beings, their army will be unstoppable. To save her kingdom and her people, Lan will need to find the only mythical weapon capable of eliminating the demon gods forever. The God Slayer. Dun dun dun. And my next book is the sequel, I believe, to Dance of Thieves, which is right there, which I have read, and it was okay, so. But um, this. Oh my god. I keep dropping stuff today. And that is Vow of Thieves by Mary A. Pearson. 
The Kazi and James have survived stronger and more in love than ever. The new life now lies be before them. The Ballingers will be outlaws no longer. Taurus Watch will be a kingdom, and Kazi and James will meet all the challenges side by side together at last. But all omin but an ominous warning marks the journey back, and they soon find themselves tangled in a web of deceit, woven by the greatest enemies and unlikeliest allies. A place where betrayals run deeper and more deadly than I ever had thought possible, and where timeless ambitions threaten to destroy them both. I may or may not mean it, so I don't know. So this book was also a part of my TBR, but I never completed it. It is The Glimmer of Grey Fates by Hannah Alcalf and Margaret Owen. So I know this was like a Kennedy school for witches and something and they have to and they recently changed the law and no one was happy about it. But crack open your spell book and enter the world at the Illustrations Governor York Academy for an extraordinary. A prestigious school for young sorcerers, the Galileo Academy has recently undergone a comprehensive Overhaul, reinventing itself as a Mormon academy in which students of all countries and identities are celebrated. In this new Galileo, every pupil is welcome, but some people aren't very and so happy with the recent changes. That includes everyone's least favorite professor, Septimus Dropworth, a stodgy old man known for his harsh rules and harsher punishments. But when the professor's body is discovered on school grounds under mysterious circumstances, the Academy students must solve the murder themselves before the lens of suspicion turns on them. So that sounds really cool. And the layout is actually really interesting. Like we got some text going on. And yeah, we got some, it seems like interview format almost. So it looks really interesting. <laughs> if you guys remember, uh, I actually read the first two of the trilogy the henna artist and I forgot what was the second call, something about jail porn, something like that. So <laughs> Secret Keeper of Jail Porn, there you go. So this is actually the third book. I know I am owning the third book but not the first two. Oh well. And there's the Perfumers of Parties by Alka Joshi. Paris 1974. Radha is now 32 and living in Paris with her husband Pierre and her two daughters. She still grieves for the baby boy she gave up years ago when she was the only dead child herself, but she loves being a mother to her daughters and she's finally found her passion, the treasure trove of sense. When her father's grandfather offered her a job at his perfume man, she quickly discovered she had a talent. She could find the perfect fragrance for any customer who walked through the door. Now, ten years later, she's working for a master perfume man, helping to design completely new fragrances for clients and building her career one cent at a time. She only wishes Pierre could understand her need to work. She feels his frustration, but she can't give up the one thing that drives her. So that sounds like a really fun story. I had this book for years, and I have still not finished reading. I have not started reading it at all. And it was actually really hyped up, and that is Red, White, Royal Blue by Casey McQuinchin. So, what happens when America's first son falls in love with the Prince of Wales? Probably nothing good, to be honest. <laughs> when his mother became President of the United States, Alex Claremont Mears was promptly cast as the American equivalent of a young royal, handsome, charismatic, genius. His image is pure millennial, marketing gold for the White House. There's only one problem. Alex has a beef with an actual prince, Henry Acosta Pond. And when the tabloids get a hold of a photo involving an Alex Henry application, US British relations take a turn for the worse. It's actually interesting, but I don't know why I have not read it yet, so maybe this will be the year I'll finally read it. And my next book is The, the Last Bookshop by Evie Woods. For too long, our piling Martha and Henry have been the side characters in their own lives. But when a vanishing bookshop casts a spell, these three unexpected strangers will discover that their own stories are every bit as extraordinary as the ones found in the pages of the beloved books. By unlocking the secrets of the shelves, they find themselves transported to a world of wonder where nothing as it seems. 
So I might have to reread the first book just because it has been such a while. But I remember being it so good, so I'm hoping my readings will still stay, stay the same. I think I gave it a 4 stars, but I'm not sure. So this is The Secret to Wings of Ebony, and this is Ashes of Gold by J.L. After the murder of her mother, Rue must whisk away from her home in East Rome and forced her to stimulate into her father's home. Gizon, a country of magic users who are as powerful as gods, but just because a girl leaves East Rome doesn't mean it's left her, especially when she discovers the dark secret behind Godhood. Magic does not come without a price, and she is the descendant of those who must pay its cost. Rue is off to the right the wrongs that kept her people shackled. So I'm really going to finish this because the first one was so good, I loved it so much. So I'm really excited to get back into this world, but I think I have to reread Wings of Ebony. And this is a, actually a fairly new pickup I had picked about December of last year, something like that. And it's The Kingdom of Sweets by Erica Johnson. I believe this is the novel of Nutcracker Retail. So, Light and Dark, this is a cursed birthright a place upon Clara and Natasha by the godfather, Joseph Mayer, whose power and greed held an entire city in his sway. Charming Clara, the favorite, grows into a life of beauty and ease, while Natasha is regulated to her sister's shadow, ignored and unloved. But Natasha sees the opportunity for revenge on one Christmas Eve, when Joseph Mayer arrives at the family gala with a nutcracker, an enchanting gift to offers entry into the alternate world, the Kingdom of Sweets. So I always loved the nutcracker and I always loved retails, so I'm hoping this will be a good, good one. And this book has been bought by one of my co-workers as a secret Santa, and that is Parasite by Hitoshi Iwaki. So they arrive in silence out of dark skies. They infest human hosts and consume them, and they are everywhere. They are parasites, alien creatures who must invade and take control of human hosts to survive. Once they have infected with their victims, they can twist the host bodies into any abdominal shapes they choose. Cranium is planning to reveal mouths of sharp teeth, bat like wings erupting from backs, blades tearing them through soft hands. But most have chosen to conceal the lethal purposes behind ordinary human faces. No one knows the secret except an ordinary high school student, Shinichi, Shinichi managed to shop, stop the investigation of his body by an alien parasite. But can he find a way to warn humanity of the horrors to come? This reminds me of Venom from Spider Man. So, yeah, it is a manga. Uh, I just opened to something creepy. <laughs> but. Yeah, it sounds really cool. My next book is a Greek mythology retold that is Clementra uh, by Constan Constanzana Casti. You were born to a king, but you marry a tyrant. You stand by helplessly as he sacrifices your child to palicate the gods. You watch rage war on a fallen shore, and you comfort yourself with violent thoughts of your own. Because this was not the first offense against you, this was not the life you ever deserved, and this will not be your undoing. Slowly, you plot. When your husband returns in triumph, you become a woman with choice. Acceptance or vengeance, infamy follows both. So you bid your time and you foster God's hands in the game of retribution. For you understood something long ago that the others never did. If power isn't given to you, you have to take it for yourself. That sounds so good. And this is also another one from our TBR, which I never completed, but I'm kind of hesitant coming back to it. I have started reading just a little bit, and I'm not sure how to feel about it. It feels a little bit cluttered, and then the sentences just kept going on and on and on, so I don't know. But this is the book that... So this is the book that wanted that wanted So this is the book that wanted burned by Mark Lawrence. Two strangers find themselves connected by a vast and mysterious library containing many wonders and still more secrets. And this is like the first book of a new series, so it sounds cool but I just don't know. Oh look at that. Okay, anyways. <laughs> And once again, this was a part of my TBR, and this is Silver in the Bomb by Alexandra Bracken. 
Tamsin Locke didn't ask to be a hollow one. As a mortal with no magical talent, she was never meant to break into ancient crypts or compete with sorcerers and cunning folk for the treasure inside. But after her thieving foster father disappeared without so much as a goodbye, it was the only way to keep himself and her brother Camel alive. I believe this is like a gender bend of King Arthur and the knights and all that, so... I really want to read this, like the sequel came out, so I really want to read this, just, it sounds really so cool. And my next one is Hemlock Island by Kelly Armstrong. So, this Lani Kilpatrick has been renting her vacation home to strangers. The invasion of privacy gives her panic attacks, but it's only the way she can keep her beloved Hemlock Island, which is the only thing she owns after the pandemic fueled their wars. From broken belongings and campfires that nearly burned down the house has escalated to bloody roads, hex circles, and now terrified renters who have fled after finding blood and nail marks all over the guest room closet. As though someone tried to claw their way out and failed. So, this is exciting. I'm really, I love books when they have like this island and they don't want to let, let, let them leave. So this is exactly what's that about, so I'm excited for this one. And maybe hopefully I will read it for my book read as well. We are almost there, about third way and everything is already in this. And my next book is Daughter of Paris by Elizabeth Holmes. Childhood companions Fleur and Colette may come under the trailing ivy of the secret garden that will be the secret sisters forever. But as they grow up, the promises of childhood are put to the ultimate test. For Colette is the daughter of the house and her life is all jazz clubs, silk, dresses, and chilled champagne. While Fleur is the orphan niece of the housekeeper and doesn't feel like she belongs anywhere. Years later, in 1939, life as they know it, it will never be the same. As the German tank rolls in Paris and become an occupied city, the promise they made as children will have consequences they could never have imagined. I believe this is a retail of Hand of Damsel, I think, something like that, and that is Ever Cursed by Kori and Heidu. Once upon a time, there were five enchanted princesses, one rich in search of justice, one queen trapped in a glass box, and a quest to find. A clock from the oldest, a tear from the saddest, a lock of hair from the most beautiful, a comb from the richest to break the curse. But the kingdom of Eva is under a spell far more threatening than any cast by a witch. Again, this is one of the books where I have it over by ear and I really want to get to it. That is Ace of Spades by Farida Abig Emidi. All you need to know is, I'm here to divide and conquer like all great tyrants do. When two in the news is age when two of the most private academy students, the Von Richards and Shiamaka Adebeo, are selected to be part of the elite school's senior playfairs, it looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but officially puts them in the runnings for valedictorian too. As Aces shows no sign of stopping, what seemed like a sick plan quickly turns into a dangerous game, with all the cards stacked against them. Can Devon and Shimanka stop Aces before things become incredibly deadly? We're about to find out. So I am uh, slowly getting into it. As you can see, this is Rise of the Vicious Princess by C.J. Medway. Princess Chavez, Willow Thorn, is the beautiful sword of Kalera, raised to be ruthless and cunning. Her only goal is to hold her war toward kingdom together long. Enough to find a path to one peace with the ancient form of Tavala, even if the cost is her own heart. I am slowly making its way, it seems to be okay, so I'm excited to how it's gonna unravel. My next book is The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. M Widower Mukesh lives a quiet life in West London when he shops every once and goes to her temple and lives up by his granddaughter Priya who hides in her room all day reading. When Mukesh arrives at the library desperate to forge a connection with his bookworm daughter, Granddaughter, Alicia wonders if the books might be a lifeline for him too. As the reading list begins to circulate in the community, new readers discover how fiction can eliminate so much about joy and sorrow and real life. Never underestimate the power of books, y'all. Oh, so I got a big boy, and then is Thrown of the Fallen by Kelly Maniscalco. This is following the Seven Princesses of Hell, and we are following Envy. The son of villain Wicked, the Prince of Envy, has never claimed to be a saint. 
But when a cryptic note arrives signaling the beginning of a deadly game, he knows it will take more than a hint of sin to win. And same as falling deep in the court. Lilith's hex objects anonymous players. Nothing will stand in his way, though none of his meticulous plans prepare him for her. The frustrating art as he ignites his sin like no other. I might leave this book for Halloween instead of as my TBR, so we will see. And my last book, so for this book, I have actually double checked everywhere, and the author did say on her website that you can start reading it with this book without having to read all the other books in the series or trilogy, however it is. And that is The Trial, A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Culver. Ice is in her blood. 18 year old water runner Eva Lada lives in her life in the shadows, the shadow of her older brother, of her magic's whisper, and of the person she accidentally killed. She is the most unwanted apprentice in the Tower of Sorcerers until the day she decides to step up and compete for a spot in the Tournament of Five Kingdoms. So, if you like The Legend of Korra, Truth Witch, and Sorcery of Thorns, this is a book for you, and this is also like that is set in the A Awakens universe, but we can start with this book if you want to. So and the cover is so pretty. I love I love like the all the icy colors. That is all I have of my twenty-four unread books. Again, it's not that bad actually. I thought I might have more. But I think I'm doing a pretty good job with my never ending t TBR files, but let me know what you guys have, let me know how much you guys have for your art red, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and now I'll see you on my next one. Bye!